Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the United States Super 8 Film and Digital Video Festival panel Q&A session. We have three of the finalists in our 2023 film festival, and we're going to be talking to them and to each other as well for the next 25 or 30 minutes. We have Jennifer Hardiker, who's a professor at Pacific University in Oregon. We have Nate Dorr, who's from Queens. Is that true? Uh, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Oh. All right. Brooklyn, Transport. New York. And we have Malo, she's from Paris, France, and we're going to be talking about their movies. And um, I just wanted to give you some information, just briefly overview about the festival. This is a festival I started back in 1988. And so it's in its 35th year. This is the 35th version. I was an active Super 8 filmmaker in the 80s and 90s, and I... Uh, was invited to go to a number of the many Super 8 festivals that were around the world. I, I was able to go to one in Montreal. I, there was one in Tours in, in France. There was one in um, Venezuela. There was also one in Brazil. I didn't go to those two, but I was partnering with Brodsky and Treadway, who were big champions of Super 8. Um, they were probably the best place to get your films transferred back in the 80s and 90s. And they set up the International Center, Center for 8 Millimeter Film. And they had money and they would send filmmakers around. And I put a package together of Super 8 films by other filmmakers I admired. And I toured them around in 1986 and then again in 1988. And the biggest Super 8 film festival in the United States in the 80s was the Ann Arbor 8 Millimeter Film Festival. And uh, I went there, they sent me there and I got to meet them. I loved their festival and I won a couple of prizes. So I thought, wow, this is really great. And then I heard a few years after 1988 that they were, or uh, in 86, I think they were winding down or morphing into something else. And then eventually it disappeared because in the 80s, Super 8 film was, you know, being replaced by digital video or analog video, I should say, as the amateur format. And so, Brodsky and Treadway said, well, why don't you set up a Super 8 festival at Rutgers? I said, why not? Because I'd already set up a film program there. So I did. And so the very first year, 1988, I invited some of my friends to show their work. And then from every year after that, it was a call for entries. And we had a jury set up of academics, um, students, and uh, journalists who would come in and pick the finalists for our festival. So that's the way it's been since back then. So I'd like to introduce you to three of the 18 or 17 finalists that we're showing this year. I mean, I've already introduced them to you, but um, uh, Jennifer's film is, gosh, Reclamation is the name of her film. Malo's film is a music video called Scum Show. Is that right? And it's for the band o OCs. OCs. And they're kind of a punk thrasher band, and and it's a really wonderful film. There, can... there are a lot of things. Uh, OCs has existed for twenty years now. They wow. they actually have uh, psychedelic rock, rock, and Scum Show is part of a um, an album that was recorded during COVID, mm -hmm. and uh, they felt that they they needed punk energy. <laughs> I, I I certainly feel it. I. It's the way I felt during COVID, so it's the perfect example. And yeah. so we're going to be talking about your film, and and Nate's film is called Triborough, and it's a kind of journey through these very interesting train tunnels and train tracks throughout, I guess, the the three boroughs in New York City. Is that correct? Um, it's actually only two boroughs in this form, but the tracks continue. So it's been proposed that they'll eventually have trains running along the whole thing. Which well, I can why don't we on. do this? Tell us about your film. Jennifer, you start and then we'll work our way around. Tell us mm -hmm. why you made your film. Well, it is a, it was a reaction to, to the pandemic mm -hmm. and, um, the, um, uh, I did a lot of hiking and I was just carrying the Super 8 camera with me, but there was that, <clears throat> that sentiment especially in the very very beginning when everybody was in lockdown mm -hmm. that um you know maybe this was a really good thing for the rest of the species on earth mm -hmm. and so i just um i really think that sometimes we're a little too um species centric that we think if uh if we cease to exist somehow that's the end of existence but but there are going to be plenty of things that exist beyond us and so it was um 
was kind of a response to the anxiety of the pandemic, but but maybe, I mean, in its own way, I hope um, it ends with definitely not hope, but <laughs> but something beautiful anyway. Yeah, I mean, you shot your film on Tri-X or a, a, a low light stock. Of yeah. 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 And yeah. your film, um, I mean, did you choose to not shoot color for a reason? Um, well, I think... I, I just happen to have a lot of black and white footage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but also, um, I do think it it obviously lends itself more to that apocalyptic feel. Yeah, and I think the soundtrack is also um, very very well crafted, as is Nate's soundtrack, which is amazing. And uh, and of course, the Scum shows. Uh, so all three soundtracks are really quite wonderful. Nate, yours is, seems also maybe it's a pandemic film too. Um, I actually. A lot of my films are like Jennifer, like what Jennifer is just saying. I think a lot about humans receding back away from the landscape. So I tend to spend a lot of time in parts of the city where we've kind of come and gone already. Um, so, but that was started before, actually. I just, that's just where I tend to hang out anyway. <laughs> so, cool. yeah. So tell us exactly where it is. And I mean, your film, it, were you on foot when you shot it or on bicycle or, I mean, you're obviously not on a train, so... No, so that's that's a set of tracks that runs from Bay Ridge in Brooklyn all the way. You can wind all the way through the boroughs, through Queens, across the Hellgate Bridge into the Bronx eventually. That's why it's the Triborough. But nowadays it's known as the Interborough Express because it's kind of been rebranded and there is dis mostly disused for years. It was a very low usage uh, freight rail. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to be turned into um, probably a commuter um, crosstown um, light rail now which is great because there's no cross towns practically in New York. It's really that's terrible. Um, but so, yeah, that's, but I knew that they were looking at maybe doing that. Um, so I thought, oh, this is a good time to go walking on these tracks that I love, where you see the kind of the backside of the city that no one normally gets to see um, mm -hmm. and sort of document what's here right now before it changes either whatever happens to it. Um, but so I walked along them and took still photos every two track ties for mm -hmm. miles and miles. <laughs> and that's, that's what became this. Wow, so it's an animation. I mean, it's truly an animation. Yeah, and I had to it, line them all up by hand to make it smooth, so. Wow. So my question, that was the other question I was going to ask you, but so it is a digital piece. I mean, it, yeah, looks, it, was, it looks like it could have been Super 8, too, because of the, of the black and white, um, uh, the look of the black and white that you shot. Yeah, I think it kind of people don't know where how to place it exactly, which is a fun way to work with digital because I hate it if you can just be like, oh, that was shot with this. And, you know, I don't know. I like to obscure <laughs> a little bit. Um, so, yeah, it was purely digital, just DSLR, but all thinking of it as photography, not so much as film. Very cool. Malo's film is really handmade. I mean, it's like a sculpted art form. And so tell us a little bit about your film and how you ended up making it. Um, so actually I had been to one of their performances beforehand and I thought, whoa, this, this band is, you know, one hell of a show. And when I knew that they were coming back, I wanted to, you know, carry this time around, not just a still camera, but also my Super 8. And I didn't know, well, I knew I wanted to do something with it, mm. but it just, you know, it was a bit of a step by step um, situation. First of all, was, you know, uh, getting the green light from their bookers so that I could bring in my cameras. Right. And I had two uh, two cameras. I had a, a, a GAF um, 415XL and a Canon. A Canon. Uh, yeah, a, a Canon uh, 514XLS, which died there. <laughs> Actually, yes, I think it took an elbow in the pit and it just, uh, it went, you know, it, it went dead. <laughs> uh, good thing I had two cameras. Mm. Uh, and so, yeah, I wanted to capture the energy of the show and to give it as a gift to the band. And mm. then as we talked, we were like, okay, well, you know, and I was, I, I knew they had a new, um, uh, album coming out and I pretty much told them is it okay if I use this footage to maybe work on a soundtrack mm -hmm. from one of the tracks from uh, a foul form and they're like yep and uh, John D Dwyer is really a lovely man and a huge fan of the film form um, and so he just he pretty much let me do whatever I wanted to do with it 
and as part of an experimental collective lab in, lab in New York, and also just a huge fan of the lab in general, maybe with photography or film. Mm -hmm. uh, I, um, I processed the film myself, mm -hmm. colored it, did a little bit of uh, editing um, on it, and then just use the computer as an easier way to edit and maybe do uh, uh, um, double exposures that I just I couldn't do with film unless I had okay. a budget, <laughs> which I didn't have. So, so you shot on super, uh, you shot on TriX as well. On TriX as yeah. well. TriX is great uh, because you can push it a lot uh, during processing if ever you're really shooting in low lights. Mm. And with the help of an XL Super 8, you really you really get a lot. And I was lucky also because uh, OCs um, is a well-lit show most mm. of the time. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I was, I was um, it turned out to be good, but I pushed it. I pushed it um, three, three steps up. Wow. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. And did you scratch on the film after the fact, or is that? Yeah, I scratched out. I, I I scratched it out by hand, uh, colored it. I um, for the the middle piece where it goes a bit noisy uh, and blue. I sliced the Super Eight in two and then taped it on. <laughs> Other super so I had a little bit of fun, arts and crafts. Going yeah, yeah, on. that's what it, it's. It, it's really a very well a, a, a sculpted film. That's what I thought. I thought of it when I saw it. So yeah, the the idea was really to um, as much as the Ben was doing an homage to the eighties uh, punk scene. My mm. idea was to follow that same idea and follow whatever the guys were doing in the eighties as well. Uh, with film so you know the scratching the coloring the slicing the taping um, and using all of that aesthetic and uh, yeah I, I was really happy of how it turned out uh, I'm very happy that I got the support both from the venue the band and it was a lot of fun to make a lot it looks yeah. like it was a lot of fun I think all three films were made with a kind of love I mean the precision of Nate's film and, you know, the the the, the strobe and this. I mean, you did the soundtrack as well, Nate, on your film? Oh, nice. so all field what, recordings, yeah. What, all field recordings, wow. But, modified field recordings, but yeah. Right, right. But I mean, there are some instruments in there. I mean, you know. Um, there were a couple instruments, but a lot of the uh, melodic sounds were things I found on the tracks and just right. sampled, essentially. And you kind of used Echo as a, a way for them to kind of sound like they're looped like your images yeah well the the film is following the tracks so the sound kind of skips along the tracks too gotcha gotcha that's beautiful so do you guys have questions for each other no question but i just wanted to tell you both how much i enjoyed your films i, I just and and i saw a lot of resonances nate between ours and then uh Marie, I I was punk kid. <laughs> it just made me so happy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got to see the Ramones at CBG. Not at CBG, oh my gosh. But I got to see them at a very. <laughs> I was just watching this really bad docudrama called CBGB with uh, 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 Alan Reichman as uh, Hilly Hilly Crystal. <laughs> it's not very good, but it did bring back memories of the bands that I got to see back then. So. Well, okay, let's do this so we can teach the folks how to buy some tickets. So I'm going to share screen in a second, and we'll come back and ask one more question. So let me just do this first before I forget. And so we share screen, and we do this one. And I guess the way that most people find us is by going to our website, which is up here. And you would most people go to njfilmfest.com because it's the parent festival where the Super 8 Festival is housed. And you would get to the Welcome Center. This is a picture of the venue. So Nate, when you're coming, this is what it looks like. We're a block away from the New Brunswick train station. I highly recommend not coming by car. Um, it's best to take a train from Penn Station and take New Jersey Transit. Usually at the time of day, there's like one every half hour, and it takes about an hour. But we're literally walking distance, like two minute walk from the train station. I was thinking of trying to bike. We'll see if that works. But Oh my God, good <laughs> luck with that. <laughs> anyway, so when you get to our homepage, you just click on current events, which bounces you down, 
keep going. Normally you could go here and I think it still directs you to our site, which it does. And here you'll get the overview. This is where you would buy tickets, but you can get um, an overview of the entire program on the schedule page. So you would go to the festival site and then you would click schedule, which I already have open, so it's a lot easier. So I don't have to scroll all the way down. But um, the Super 8 Festival is taking place on Saturday, February 18th. There's two programs, but only one of them is in person. Um, the program is completely online for all three programs, but two of them will be in person. Um, the seven o'clock show was going to be in person, but because there's some work being done in the space that the university is booting us out. So I'm only doing that screening. Um, the seven o'clock screening on the first show date is going to be online only. So as you can see, there's a lot of films. This is the very first program, which uh, Jennifer's film and Nate's film is part of. And there's a film from Boston, uh, two films from England that are part of the Straight Eight Festival, where you shoot unedited. This is a film from Brazil that was really quite wonderful. This is a film from Buda, Texas by Heidi Van Horn, also using Tri-X. Here's a still from Jennifer's film. Uh, this is a kind of B-movie goof by John Hines from Colorado called From Above. Here's a beautiful still from Nate's movie, Triborough. And The Winter Fern is also a digital film, as is uh, Martin Garrick's collage film. That's also digital. But I'd say 80% of what we're showing is Super 8, like Eric Jacobson's Egypt. Place in Eden is from Israel. That's a digital film. Zev Aaron is coming. He's based in New York and his film is a Super 8 film. And wow. then the feature that's going to be online only is in the evening, or I should say all day. It was going to be at seven o'clock, but again, it's only online. So the program is available. Both programs are available online for 24 hours, starting at 12 midnight on Saturday. And then it's available till 11.59, I think, that evening. The great thing is if you start watching, it's available to you for 24 hours once you start watching. So if you start watching at 11 o'clock at night on Saturday the 18th, it's good into the next day. Um, this is a feature film by Reed Harkness. He's in Seattle. And then on Sunday, we have another program that's online and in person at five o'clock. And that includes how to Behave at a Party by Alison Rad Radomsky. She's from Colorado also. And then Scum Show by Malos. Uh, I put both names down. I don't know if that's cool. I, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> all right, that's cool. And so now uh, Marie-Laure is, and you go by Malo. I go by Malo. I've been going by Malo since high school when I oh. moved to the States. Well, not when I moved, but when I was in the States, it was just much easier. Mm. to go by Malo and mm. Malo Sutra fish is actually Mal it's a it's a pun um Malo Sutra in um in Bosnian means uh kind of like in your dreams mm. and so yeah it's just it's, so you're channeling your Marcel for my films you're channeling your inner Marcel Duchamp <laughs> pretty much <laughs> and then okay so we also have one more longer film uh, called Spontaneous Artifacts by David Finkelstein. He's also an alumnus. We've shown pretty much everything he puts out. There's a cult following for his movies. He just got a Guggenheim Fellowship, so I was very impressed with that. So we're going to be showing all those movies. And again, if you want to buy tickets, you go to the catalog page and you can click on them and you hit pre-order and you'll get to watch a whole mess of films uh, for program one on day one. The feature film is just one program. It's just a feature that features a, a variety of different footage, but it has a lot of Super 8 in it. And then, of course, the um, last program is at 5 o'clock, and you can click on pre-order to buy tickets, too. I'm going to stop sharing. Go back to say hi, everybody. So the program is $15 per program. But again, that allows you to watch it online and in person. And for our New Jersey Film Festival, we have a number of people they watch during the day. Then they come in the evening to hang out with the filmmakers and watch the film again on our big screen. So anyway, um, I, I wanted to open it up to you guys to ask more questions to each other. So I didn't want to cut that off.
Go ahead. I have a question for Jennifer then. Um, for, well, first off, I love both of your films. I used to see the OCs every time they came to town back when I first moved to New York. So I have been in that pit with you where you were shooting from. I know <laughs> how hectic that <laughs> must have been. It's great. Um, and Jennifer, of course, like I felt like a lot, there was a lot of resonance there. But I want to know um, where, how did you pick your landscapes? Were those places you sort of incidentally gathered as you were tra traveling around doing whatever, living your life? Or did you determinedly pick that set of places to construct this? Um, the, the more foresty areas that was, I was just hiking and carrying a camera and then, um, but the, the idea of the power lines that was chosen, that was, yeah, very deliberately chosen. And at what point did the whole concept kind of coalesce for you? That's a great question. Cause I think I was stuck. I mean, so I had the concept the whole time that I was shooting, but then of course, when you sit down and edit, that's, that's when you're like, Huh. <laughs> and by the way, I should mention that the footage I was using was really old, which is partly why it's so, so grainy. Mm -hmm. And so uh, much of it came back unusable from the lab because I... It was very washed it, out, like at the yes, very end. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so then I had a much less footage to work with than I had anticipated that I would. But it was really creating the soundtrack. So I kind of paused from um, from editing the picture and then created that sound collage and then went back and cut the picture to match the sound collage, which is oh, something that's interesting. All three, all three of your films are then shot first. And then, well, I guess in Malo's case, the song is already there. So you have to edit to the song, but. I, you know. I didn't know at first which song I was going to get. Mm. I just shot, I had about 12 minutes of footage. So I have like, I shot four partridges of Super 8 and then did the editing without knowing what song <laughs> I would match it to. So Right. So the, then you match the sound to the footage for all three films. That's interesting. Very cool. Well, um, yeah. Yeah. I have a question because where in Oregon, because I lived in Portland. Yeah. Um, you were in Portland? Well, I'm, I'm uh, th I technically am 30 miles west of Oregon on your way to the coast. That's where the little college is that I teach at. Mm. Oh, nice, nice. And did you deliberately choose um, super eight, like the the atmosphere? Because there's something that you get right away from watching your film is the atmosphere. Something quite there's something with super eight anyway that does that, but it's really uh, present right from the get go, which works really well with the soundtrack. But was that a it was deliberate. Yeah. The, you know, there's something so wonderfully moody oftentimes at, in, in Oregon. Right. So like that opening shot with the, the mist and everything, I've just, oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's very effective uh, and very efficient. Uh, and, uh, but it's nice sometimes how accidents also bring something because of the, you said that your footage was um, some of it was unusable, but towards the end, we get something on the film that just adds up to that, which I know I'm I'm a big fan of personally when I, with film, I think accidents are wonderful. Oh, but do you know that wasn't an accident? That's actually a superimposed. I had, um, I had grown moss on film leader in a bucket for a couple wow. months. <laughs> and then that's, that's that texture to give it more of that kind of like nature encroaching even if you don't get that that's what's going on. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yes, I thought yeah. initially it looked like fixer splotches, but now it makes perfect sense because fixer splotches wouldn't have been as permeated all through the scene. It would have been- I was wondering what it was. Yeah, was yeah. Very cool. Yeah, very nice. I mean, yeah. I'm discovering your filmography, Jennifer. There's a lot uh, and it's it's great. It's yeah, great. you can check out, go to her website. She's got all, all, all of her films are posted there. And Nate, your film as well is awesome. I, I love structuralism um, films. And it reminded me of a work done. I was looking for his name. I forgot it. But it's called The Grid. Uh, it's done by a um, Portuguese filmmaker. Uh, and it's also um, a flicker with uh, photography, black and white. And it's on architecture. And also, I, I am a big fan of both your work and Nate. I really relate because in Paris, we also have the Petite Ceinture, which is uh, which you may know of. And uh, so it made me think of it. And also, 
have lived in Brooklyn. I, was like, oh. yeah. I, I actually I actually lived in Port de Vanve when I used to live in Paris. So I know that there's the periphery boulevard also. That's something else that's different. Well, it's different though. Anyway, it's sorry. Right next Go to ahead. It. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I no, I've just dreamed of shooting on uh the Petit Sincher since before I made this film, even. This is not the first time I've hung around on tracks. So <laughs> yeah, it sounds amazing. I, I yeah. do have one last question. I'm sorry to jump in. Nate, did you have any kind of dangerous moments on the tracks? I said you you hang out there all the time and there are some passerbys and we see a guy walking his dog and a cat that was flying around. And I mean, is it, I kind of was a little nervous for you and especially in the tunnel scene. Um, was it, is it safe there? Um, I mean, it's, people don't go there that much, but there's people who come and go, you know, teens go up there to hang out. That guy was walking his dog, which was really weird. I thought he was a security guard from a distance, but no, he just waved and took off. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was graffiti artists everywhere, so I'd stop and talk to them sometimes. I had the idea of making a real documentary at some point and actually mm. talking to people, but I feel like the place just stands for itself better than anything I could have people say about it. So I kept it to just that. But to, you know, meeting all those people added to it. And yeah, they were all fine. I don't know. I I think um, the energy you put out when you're in a place kind of is like partly what you get back. So if you're if you just are part of the landscape, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you do have a shadow cameo too i mean i did catch that because mm -hmm. i stopped and i said no oh, okay because i wanted to know how you did it and i realized yeah he's probably on foot and i just wasn't sure if it was step printed or how you did it but you explained exactly how it was done so it made perfect sense okay i think uh we hit the time limit i want to thank you all for participating in this q a and um uh, I, I want to thank you for wonderful films, and I look forward to showing them on the 18th and 19th of February. So thanks so much, you guys. Thank well, you. Thank you. Thank and this you. is great. Nice to meet you all. Yeah, nice to meet you. And, uh, you know, Nate, if you want to come to Paris and shoot Petite Centure, you know, be my guest. <laughs> and likewise, Jennifer, you know. <laughs> thank you. Wonderful.